Hey folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here, and there has been one full day of competition at the Australian CrossFit Championship, and while there is not a live stream, I think there's a lot of people who are like me, which aren't necessarily super familiar with the event because it was created from the ground up to be a sanctional, or with many of the athletes competing because most of them are from Australia. So. I wanted to give you guys a quick recap of what happened on day one of the Australian CrossFit Championship and who to watch out for for the rest of the weekend. Let's get to it. One of the things to keep in mind here, folks, is that I am in Austin, Texas. The ACC is taking place in Australia. There's a massive time difference. So as I'm recording this, and by the time that this is released, the second day of competition is just about to get started in, in what would be evening time for me here in Texas. So I'm going to try and refer to days of competition as opposed to days of the week because maybe that'll help not keep it you know, any more confusing than it already could be. Overall, it looks like there are going to be 11 events for the individuals over the course of the weekend, seven events for the teams, which puts it as the most volume that we've seen for the individuals in any of the sanctionals so far. So, you know, we saw 10 at Dubai, we saw seven at Wadapalooza, we're gonna see 11 this weekend at the ACC. And I think a big part of this is trying to figure out exactly, you know, where the sanctioned events are supposed to sit in terms of the regional games continuum of difficulty and volume. And I think there's going to be a lot of figuring out going on with this, but the experimentation is to be expected because there is no right answer right now, at least. So day one of the ACC kicked off with an outdoor event uh, that had swimming and kettlebell thrusters and burpees, which is a combination that we saw at the 2014 CrossFit Games, but is particularly cool here because Australian athletes at the games tend to do really well with the water-based events, but we've never been able to see an Australian or a Pacific regional include a water-based event. So this is a really cool opportunity to kind of lean into some of the things that make some an area, region like Australia, you know, really special and unique and make an event out of it. So here's what the leaderboard looks like after one event. On the men's side, we have Matt McLeod in the lead, followed by James Newberry and then Baden Brown in third. Now, Matt McLeod was a top 10 regionals athlete and was able to put together a pretty decent set of events, but also had some low finishes at regionals 2018. So I'm interested to see exactly how that improvement is going to show up in an event like this, which has more volume than the regionals did, but might in terms of competitive nature be kind of like a regionals light with who's showing up. James Newberry probably needs no introduction, but you know, badass games athlete, great hairdo, nice tats, always showing up when he needs to show up and competing very hard. He's actually the Pacific Regional Champion from last year. And so I think he's probably the favorite to win this thing and take the invite to the CrossFit Games. But with, again, that many events, you never really know exactly how it's all gonna pan out. And in third place, Baden Brown was actually just four points out of qualifying for the CrossFit Games last year. So this is a guy who clearly has the capacity to be a games level athlete and perhaps when you put together the number of events showing up and the less competitive field at the very top, maybe this is gonna be a chance for him to shine and, and take that first place spot. On the women's side, the leaderboard is topped with an athlete that all of us are familiar with, Samantha Briggs, who had committed to competing at the Australian CrossFit Championship really early on and has already won the Dubai CrossFit Championship. So she already has her invite to the games and her competition here is really just kind of a tune-up, I would say, as opposed to any other real competitive reason to be there. Hopefully, you know, she's able to put on a good show, but at the end of the day, her performance here doesn't really matter in the game season outside of potentially winning a little bit of money. The three athletes following Sam Briggs on the leaderboard at the end of the first day are Christy Bishop, Tess Herring, and Maddie Sturt. Now, Christy Bishop was a middle of the pack Regionals athlete last year, clearly a year's worth of training has helped her out being able to finish just behind Sam Briggs in an event that is just kind of an engine based thing is pretty decent. So that's something to be really proud of. I think once we move indoors and start seeing some of the more of those CrossFit style workouts showing up, some of those different couplets and triplets, 
I, I think we're gonna start seeing uh, where that training has taken her. And then following her, Tess Herring, who apparently it was her birthday and she won the first heat. So that's about as good of a birthday gift as you can get, I would say, and on a competitive weekend. And following Tess Herring is Maddie Sturt. Maddie Sturt is a three times games athlete and honestly, probably the favorite to take the invite from the Australian CrossFit Championship. If she doesn't beat Sam Briggs, she's probably gonna be taking second to Sam Briggs, which puts her in line for that backfilling of the spot. And Maddie Sturt is a games athlete who's been in the big show a bunch of times. So she knows what it takes to win. She knows what it takes to compete at regionals, which has a much higher competitive threshold there, uh, but with slightly less volume. And on the other hand, she's also had the volume of the CrossFit Games to know exactly what this is going to feel like. So I think Maddie is in a good position to kind of take advantage of her experience as well as her fitness and take the invite to the 2019 CrossFit Games. On the team side, there's a tie in first place and there's a tie in third place, but really the teams to focus on, there, there are three of them to really take a look at. One is CrossFit East Tamaki, which has taken a team to the CrossFit Games in the past. Uh, I don't know if they're all the same members as last year's team, but I think a couple of members at least are similar. And Reebok CrossFit Frankston, which is Rob Forte's team, and they have a bunch of similar athletes from their games team last year competing at this event. And then Project X, which is Raw Strength and Conditioning super team made up of a bunch of athletes that we all kind of recognize as, as games athletes in their own right. Con Porter, Brandon Swan, Jess Coughlin, and Harriet Roberts, who hasn't made the team, the games individually, but is a, is a team athlete who's been at the games on a team before. So the team competition has a little bit less volume. It's only seven events, it looks like, over the course of the weekend. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly how all of that pans out. Uh, maybe they do have more events. I'm just taking a look at the schedule, honestly, and it doesn't look like there's the same number of events for the teams as there are for the individuals, but we'll find out as it goes along, folks. So there you have it with one event down at the Australian CrossFit Championship. It's really hard to make any real predictions here, but usually the athletes with the games experience are gonna be the athletes to watch. So on the men's side, James Newbury. On the women's side, Maddie Sturt, and on the team side, those three teams, which are either the Super Team Project X or the other two teams which have had games experience. So I think it's gonna be really interesting to see exactly how this pans out, especially considering this is the first of the sanctioned event that has no live stream component. So the coverage is gonna be very much based on social media as well as what you can kind of glean off of other people's Instagram, maybe the competitors or various coaches that are gonna be there. Either way, there's a whole lot going on in our space and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. And at the end of this weekend, we're gonna have yet another set of invited athletes to the CrossFit Games. So what is more exciting than that? It's easy to miss those things. That's what I'm here for. I'll see you guys next time. Before I go, folks, I just wanted to say Wadapalooza was a great time. I still have a few pieces of content that I'm working on getting out from Wadapalooza, and I appreciate all of the support that you guys showed me, all the love you guys showed me over the past week while I was out there in Miami trying to cover that event, which was hectic but awesome at the same time. If this is the type of content that you like to see, let me know, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. The more people that know, the easier it is for me to continue doing this thing. Together, we're gonna continue covering the whole CrossFit Games new season format and try and put some sense in this whole crazy world. Thank you so much, folks, and I'll see you guys then.